In this week's movies, 56 Up, and a look back at On the Road and This is 40. Isn't it weird that our birthday is the same week and then we're gonna have a party and it's just for me? No, I don't think it's weird at all. Cause you're turning 40 and I'm turning 38. Directed by Judd Apatow, This is 40 catches up with Pete and Debbie, the designated grown-ups from Knocked Up, Apatow's previous film about the conception and birth of their niece. In his review, A.O. Scott writes, This one is all about Pete and Debbie who, along with their two daughters, occupy a big white house in one of Los Angeles's nicer zip codes, and who, in the course of a hectic week, undergo, well, what exactly? A matched set of midlife crises? A rough patch in their marriage? A flurry of first world problems so trivial as to be an insult to the planet's struggling masses? Yes, sure, all of that. But to drop their troubles into such neat conceptual boxes would be to simplify a situation that is both agreeably and annoyingly messy. This sounds horrible, but do you ever wonder what it would be like if you and your wife were separated by something bigger, like death, like her death? I have given it a, a fair amount of thought. Not in any painful way, but just like a gentle floating off. There are a lot of loose ends and a few forced conclusions, but then again, the acceptance of imperfection is Mr. Apatow's theme. So a degree of sloppiness is to be expected. That's life. I poison your cupcakes that you pretend not to eat every day and just put like enough in to just slowly weaken you. I love it. I would enjoy our last few months together. Me too. Because you'd be so weak and like sweet and I could take care of you and but while killing you. See, you know what I love about us? You can still surprise me. Do you still like to cuddle and love and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, but not in public. <laughs> <laughs> Directed by Michael Apted, 56 Up is the latest installment in his long-running documentary project where he visits a group of Britons every seven years and produces a film about their lives. In her review, Manola Dargis writes, What gives the Up series its punch is less its longevity or the human spectacle it offers, but that these are moving images of touchingly vibrant lives at certain moments in time and space. Watching them is like peering into a memory machine, one that inevitably summons up your own reminiscences. It's fascinating to listen to the participants mull over the series and their own roles in it. Over the years, some have felt misrepresented, aggrieved, and at times angry. And yet, for all their reservations, they showed up and opened mouths, hearts, homes, and veins. I don't want to answer those kind of questions. The first seven years have gone extremely quickly. We've just grown together. I don't think you really notice it. I mean, you still think you're the same. It's when, maybe when you pull a muscle, <laughs> That just reminds you that you're getting older. I always liked older people as I was growing up, funny enough. My ambition as a scientist is to be more famous for doing science than for being in this film, but unfortunately, Michael, it's not going to happen. The Dean just raised in society. He had just married a 16-year-old chick named Mary Lou. Where do you find such absolutely wonderful people? I've never seen anyone like them. Directed by Walter Salas from the semi-autobiographical novel by Jack Kerouac, on the Road follows two young beatniks as they crisscross post-war America. In his review, Stephen Holden writes, If there is little to actively dislike about On the Road, there is a great deal to be disappointed in. Kerouac's novel is really a romantic pian to a charismatic madman told by his worshipful acolyte and chronicler. In the book, character development and storytelling are secondary to blasts of supercharged writing that is the literary equivalent of jazz improvisation. But because so little of that language is in the film, Sal Paradise, based on Kerouac himself, emerges as an earnest, passive, almost drippy disciple more concerned with gathering material for a novel than with living high in the moment. It all seems of little consequence. One line 